Good morning, church family. We come to you on day 47 of the lockdown. Cases of coronavirus are rising in India and there is still much uncertainty ahead of us. But one thing we do know is that God is still on his throne. He is sovereign in and over all things. He can work for good in all circumstances and events. And we are his precious children. We know that nothing can separate us from the love of God and that he hears and answers every single one of our prayers. These are great reasons for us to rejoice today and to have peace and certainty despite what is happening around us. We also thank God that even though we can't meet in person, our church is still alive as we come together online to read and meditate on the Word of God, to share what is happening in our lives and to pray for each other and for the world. If you are not part of a small online group, there is no better time than now to join one. I really encourage you to send a text to the number on the screen and let us know if you'd like to join one. If you have a prayer request, don't hesitate as well to contact our church phone. Share your request with us and we have a dedicated prayer team who would love to be praying for you at this time. We also invite you to continue to give your tithes and offerings online. You'll find the details on the screen now and we thank you for your continued faithfulness in your giving. Now let's enjoy a time of worship together. Good morning church, how are you? Hope everybody is doing great under the mighty protection of our Saviour. So as a worship team, we are missing you so much. We might not gather and meet up physically, but we know that and we believe that we are always together in the Spirit of the Lord. So as we sing songs, let's worship the King of Kings and the God who is God to each and every nation on this earth. So let's make a joyful noise.
sing it together. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom, nothing can be shaken. Shake.
Hope you enjoyed the worship. Today we also want to wish the mothers in our church a very happy Mother's Day. During this season, your role as a mother in your household has never been so important. We know many of you have been juggling household work, cooking, helping your children with their school work, caring for their emotional and physical needs, working from home yourself, supporting your husbands, and hopefully finding some time to take care of yourself and your own health and needs. We want to honor and bless you today for the way you serve and love your family. 
Today we want to honor and bless every mother and every mother's heart. For our own mothers, for the love and sacrifice and prayers they have sown into our lives, for those who are taking care of their children now, caring for every need and loving them unconditionally. For the mothers-to-be, for those who love children, for those whose children have already flown the nest, but who always will remain a mother. For those who are waiting in faith for God to fulfill a desire for children. For those who have lost and grieved a precious child and may experience pain on a day such as this. And for those who have never borne their own children, but who love and nurture other lives just as a mother would. Today we bless you in the name of Jesus and pray that God would continue to guide you in your journey of motherhood filling you with much grace, comfort, wisdom, patience, peace, joy, and favor. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, in the NIV version, verse 6 says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. When the world outside seems to be in turmoil, we pray for you all in this season, that God would continue to grant you success in raising your children to love and to know God who brings us true peace and hope in our lives. And to know the precious gift of Jesus, His victory on the cross, and the boundless love of the Father in heaven. Thank you for everything you do and have done. And have a wonderful and a happy Mother's Day. Just give me one second. Thank sure. you. Sorry. Uh huh. Hey. Hi. Two minutes. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Sorry about hey, that. Hey, Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have you ever done one of these interviews over the camera before? No. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the job to get started with. It's not just um, a job, it's sort of probably the most important job. Uh, the title that we have going right now is Director of Operations, but it's really kind of so much more than that. Responsibilities and requirements are, are really quite extensive. Uh, first category for the requirements would be mobility. This job requires that you must be able to work standing up most or really all of the time, uh, constantly on your feet, constantly bending over, constantly exerting yourself, a high level of stamina. Uh, uh, okay. That's a lot. For how many, like, for how many hours? Uh, 135 hours to unlimited hours a week. It's basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure you'll have a chance from time to time to maybe just sit down here and there, yeah? Uh, you mean like a break? Yeah. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. Is, is that even legal? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like no lunch? You can or... have lunch, but only when the associate is done eating their lunch. Uh, I think that's a little intense. No, no not possible. That's crazy. Now, this position requires excellent negotiation and interpersonal skill. We're really looking for someone that might have a degree in uh, medicine, in finance, and the culinary arts. You must be able to wear several hats. Associate needs constant attention. Sometimes they have to stay up with an associate throughout the night. Being able to work in a chaotic environment, if you, if you had a life, we'd ask you to sort of give that life up. No vacations. In fact, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and holidays, the workload is gonna go up, and we demand that. With, with a happy disposition. Uh, that's almost cruel. <laughs> that's almost a, a very, very sick, twisted joke. Worry about when there's time to sleep or... Oh, no time to sleep. Yeah, all-encompassing, all almost. That's exactly right. 365 days a year? Yes. No, that's, that's inhumane. That's, that's very insane. The meaningful connections that you make and the, the feeling that you get from really helping your associate are immeasurable. Also, let's cover the salary. The position is going to pay absolutely nothing. Excuse me? No. Nobody's doing that for free. Yeah, pro bono. Completely for free. <laughs> no! What if I told you there's someone that actually currently uh, holds this position right now? Billions of people, actually. Who? Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moms. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> And they meet every requirement, oh, don't wow. they? Oh my god. Moms are the best! Yeah, there's no pay. They're 24 hours. They're always there. Now I'm thinking about my mom. Yeah, and what are you thinking about her? I'm thinking about all those nights and everything. Thank you so much for everything you do. I know it doesn't seem like I appreciate all of it, but I definitely do. So, Mom, I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. I love you very much. You've been there through thick and thin. 
<laughs> my mom is just awesome. She's awesome. Now of these, three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Harpy, you're an extremely loving mother to our children, the most I could imagine. They and I are very lucky. We love you very much. Happy Mother's Day. My mom is truly amazing. She's very, truly kind. She makes the best of food. She cooks, she bakes. I'm very lucky to have her as my mom and I love you so much, Mom. My mother is great. She always says good night to us. And she loves all of us. She always puts us into her heart. She'll always be with us. Hi everyone, I'm Nisha. Hi, good morning everyone, I'm Rina. We have many relationships around us that we cherish, but the most important love, the pure and divine relationship is that of a mother and child. A selfless love Care and affection makes it the most significant and godly relationship. We see that God created mankind, but our mothers were the medium in creating us. A mother not only gives us life, but does our upbringing and also protect us. I take this opportunity to thank Lord Jesus for giving us such a wonderful mother. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers around the world. Hello, I'm Natasha. I wish my mom a happy Mother's Day. Hello, my name is Jessica. I wish my mom happy Mother's Day. I love you. I love you. I love you, mommy. I love you. To the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you are the world. That one person is mother. My mom, to me, is an extremely educated, intelligent, and lovely person. She is my first teacher who taught me ABCDs. She is my first doctor who reached my mind and gave me medicines. She is my everything who sacrificed everything for me and she is the one who told me about our God and holding my hands to walk in his path. I love my mom and I am great to be her child. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mom. Love you so much mom. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your prayers. Love you mom. I just want to wish a uh, happy Mother's Day to all the women, especially uh, my mother. I don't say this always, but I take this as an opportunity to say, I love you, Mama. Thank you for having my back always. Thank you for encouraging me all the way. Thank you for mirroring God's love. I work hard till I bring a proud smile in your face. Love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. It was not obvious for me to understand your heart in my life. But as I'm growing, my respect and honor is growing. So Hi, Beach City. Hope you all are doing good by his grace. I want to take time to appreciate my mom. Uh, I'm so thankful and glad to have such a mom. I thank God for such a beautiful and wonderful mom. She supplies everything I even asked before. Uh, I wish a very happy Mother's Day to all our mothers in our church. Stay home. Be blessed. Today we are blessed to have Pastor Esther Thathapudi sharing with us. Many of you know Esther is Josh's younger sister and we were blessed when she came to visit us last year to share the Word of God with our church family. I pray you are encouraged and God ministers to your heart as she shares a special message with us today. Hello Beat City Church. What an honour and a privilege to join with you in worship this morning. I'm really excited to be bringing Word to you this morning. And I, re I thank my brother Josh and uh, my sister-in-law, Jess, for giving me the honor of sharing the word with you. 
Uh, I want to take a moment to wish all the mothers at Beat City Church a very happy Mother's Day. May God bless you and uh, for all the hard work and effort you put in to raising those beautiful children of yours. Um, this morning I would like to um, bring a word that's very close to my heart. I've been meditating on this since January this, this year. Um, and I want to share with you this very, this very particular uh, message this morning. Well, when we look at uh, Genesis 21, we see that God had promised Abraham and Sarah in their old age that they would have a child, and it wasn't happening. They had waited for 20 years, and the promise of God was not being fulfilled in their lives. And so, in a moment of haste, and in a moment of just really tired of waiting on God to do it, Sarah took things into her own hands. She said to her husband, Abraham, I want you to go into my handmaid and Hagar and produce a child with her. That's the only way we're ever going to have that little promised son running around this house. It's not going to happen with us. We're too old to have children. And Abraham he went in and united with this woman, and her name was Hagar. And they had a child, and the child's name was Ishmael. He was a boy child named Ishmael. And unfortunately, Sarah changed her mind. We see that after the baby was born, after she got pregnant herself, she gave Abraham an ultimatum. She said to him, throw the bond woman and the baby out of our household. We have our own baby, and I'm not interested in having two wives for you. And the Bible said that Abraham hearkened unto the voice of his wife. I think we're skipping a lot of things here. But Abraham did indeed hearken to the voice of his wife. This is the real story that happened. You know that Abraham and Sarah had a son named Isaac. But Abraham had a child with Hagar named Ishmael. And so he gives them a little bit of food and he gives them a skin filled with water. Abraham sets the burden of this on Hagar's shoulders. She was never planning on doing this alone, but her situation got bad. And he says to Hagar, I'm putting you out of the house. You're on your own. Go away. And there were left in the desert. And there they were in the desert wandering. And after a while, the water runs out, the food runs out. If you could go to the Judean desert that we're referring to here, you won't last long there without water. No one with a desire to live enters into this, into this situation. It is a dire situation that you can get into very, very quickly. And they were in it. And when they had run out of water, and when they had run out of food, and it was evident to Hagar that her son Ishmael was going to die, being so heartbroken, she places him under a shrub, and then she walks away the distance. The way she measured it was as far as a bow can shoot, a bow and an arrow. And she finds herself far away from him because she can't bear to see her child die of thirst. It's a cruel death, a horrible death. She can't bear to watch what's going to happen to him. She was actually saying that moms and dads and parents find themselves saying from time to time because of the condition of their children, I can't bear to watch this happen. When you see a child going deeper and deeper into addiction, when you see someone messing up their life more and more and more, destroying their own potential, and it became so painful for this mother to watch that she said, I can't just sit here and let him die in my arms anymore. I can't look at this anymore. And in order to maintain my sanity, I've got to distance myself because I can't bear to see it. She puts him under a shrub and she puts distance between her and her child because she didn't want to see it. She couldn't. She didn't want to know it. She didn't want to be there. She felt she was better off not knowing what was happening to her son. She was almost going into denial now of what's happening to her child. She had nothing to help her child. All she could and all she has was left was to cry. She cried out. She lifted her voice and she wept. And this is one of the most tender stories in the Old Testament. 
And God heard the voice of the lad, and an angel of the Lord came to them in the desert. It does not say that the angel or the Lord heard the voice of the mother. It said that he heard the voice of the child. And the angel said to the mother, Fear not, God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. You're separated from him. You think that God can only hear your prayers where you are. But God heard the prayer where he is. Fear not, arise, lift up the lad, for I will make him a great nation. Ishmael's not cursed. I don't care how bad he looks right now. I'm going to make something great out of that kid. I have my hand on that kid. I don't care what you're seeing. I don't care what you're looking at. Something great's going to come out of Ishmael. And don't you let anybody tell you anything different. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. It was there all the time, but she didn't see it until God opened her eyes. She, didn't, she had given up on him. She didn't want to see what would happen to him. But God was listening to the cry of that child. God heard his voice. And here's my point. When God opens your eyes, you will see something. And I want to say to parents whose children have gone astray that are listening to me, Parents who have wept, parents who have cried, parents who can't bear to watch that child becoming an alcoholic or that child, you know, who's living off with someone they're not married to or that child who's gone off to college and they don't come to church anymore and they don't believe in God anymore. And if you've had to put distance between you and them, maybe even to keep your sanity because the addiction is so strong in their life. What you don't realize is when the child was a baby and you prayed for that child and you taught the child Bible stories and you prayed little prayers, when you tuck them in, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. When you sung songs in the car and when you taught them the word of God, the point that I want you to see is this, that there is something that had been put in that child that when the child was separated from his mother and in a terrible, terrible place, there is something in that child that was crying out for help. And God heard the cry of the lad's voice. What you put in those children when you train them up, what you teach them when you teach them the Bible, when you read little stories from the Word and have those devotions and pray what you put in them will still cry out, even when they're gone and doing their own thing. Just like God told Cain, he said, Cain, your brother's blood is crying out from the dirt. I want to say that if the blood of a man can cry out from the dirt and God can hear that cry, how much more those children that we have pleaded the blood of Jesus over and God and the Spirit of God to touch them, how much more will God hear the voice of that child even when the dirt of the world has covered them up? So even when they're filthy with the sins of this world, where there is something, there is something in them that God can hear that says, don't leave me here. I don't belong here. I wasn't raised like this. I'm better than this. And even though they don't even know that they're crying out, there's something mom and dad had put in them that keeps crying out to God. And they can never get out of the grasp and the grip of God's grace. God is hearing the voice of the lad where he is. God can hear them today where they are. Fear not, he says to the parents. Fear not. The Lord opened her eyes and she saw a well. She saw provision. She saw living water. And she saw what was invisible when the Lord opened her eyes. And not only that, what blessed me about the story is that the angel said, I will make a great nation out of this child. In other words, God is saying concerning the children that you're worried about, if you raise them right, if you've got a covenant with God, and even when they aren't living right, something is crying out and God says, I've got a great plan for your children, even when you can't see it. God saw a well 
all the time Hagar was weeping. The eyes of the Lord are on your children. The eyes of the Lord are upon your family. His eyes are tuned into a voice that they don't even know he has put in them. So this morning, I just want to encourage you. Maybe you are a single parent like Hagar, wandering in the wilderness, not knowing where to go and what to do and how to survive the harsh circumstances. Maybe the harsh circumstances, the harshness of the wilderness is taking the life out of you and your child. But we have a God who shows up even in the wilderness, even when there's no hope left. He shows up. Hagar had to rise up. She couldn't remain in denial. She had to get up to help her son, whom God is going to bless. The situation looks hopeless. But Hagar still rose up to lift her son. Maybe your child is too painful to handle at the moment, but the Lord is providing you everything you need at this moment to handle your situation. When you cry out to God, he will answer and provide for you even in the wilderness. We all know how Ishmael becomes a great nation. Fear not about the hopeless situation you're in. God has a provision set right before your eyes. Ask God to open your eyes. Lean on him because no matter how bad things look for you right now, God can always turn your mess into a great message because this single mom, this single parent cried out to God and surrendered to him. God made Ishmael a great nation and today we can all see that. So wherever you're listening to and whatever situation you're in, I just want to encourage you that what you're doing today, those prayers that you're praying with your child, the Bible stories that you share with them every day, you know, the way that you are, you know, working hard to provide for this child and you wish someone would help you uh, in uh, raising this child. I just want to encourage you that God sees you, the God who sees who saw Hagar, he sees you today. He sees the situation you're in and God says he's watching you and he's providing for you. So, you know, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Even if you're a single parent like Hagar and even if you're in a situation like the harshness of the wilderness of the Judean desert, maybe you find yourself in such a situation this morning. But I just want to encourage you with this short message that God sees you. Not only does he see you, he is providing for you. Do not be discouraged. Rise up, rise up. I know the burden you carry on your shoulders is heavy. And you wish it was different. But you know, God still shows up in your wilderness. And God has come right now into your room, wherever you are, to lift the burden off. And he says, I'm here. I see you. And I see you crying. I see you, you know, confused about the future. But God's saying, I've got you. He's the God who blessed the bondwoman's son. And you who are in a covenant with God, you are under a greater blessing and God's going to lead you into that blessing. You know, when I look at in, look at my own life, you know, I was I was like Ishmael in a desert, away from God, away from the truth that I've been taught, away from living the life that was right before God. I was doing bad. I was being a rebellious child. But you know, my parents cried out to God. You know, when when they couldn't stand, when they couldn't bear watching me uh, bring myself to destruction, all they could do was cry out to God because they couldn't help me in any other way. All they did was cry out to God. And because they cried out to God, God heard their prayer and he helped me come out of my destruction. And today I stand before you as a witness that God hears us when we as parents cry out for, your ch for our children. He hears us. He provides for us. He brings our children out of the destruction that they're in. The God who saw Hagar, the God who saw Ishmael, has seen me in my own destruction, has seen my parents when they cried out for help. And today I stand as a witness that our God provides for us. So whatever situation you're in today, I just want to encourage you and bless you this morning that as a mother, all that you're doing, all the hard work you put in, I just want to say God sees that. And you know, as Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, do it heartfully as to the Lord and not as to men. 
And when you're serving that child, when you're blessing that child, when you're raising that child, you're not doing it just because one day you're going to reap great rewards for all the hard work that you're putting in. And so this morning, be blessed. God bless you tremendously. And uh, may you have peace and joy and comfort as you walk this very um, challenging uh, path ahead. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And have a beautiful and wonderful Mother's Day. Bye. We hope you enjoyed the online service today. We hope our church family knows that we are praying for you all, for all of your needs and burdens at this time. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with us directly or via the church phone if you have a need or a prayer request. We'd love to continue uplifting you during this time. We wish you a blessed Sunday and a wonderful week ahead. God bless you.